Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and it is time once again to begin our Thursday readings. <coughs> A reading from the book of Exodus. When the people became aware of Moses' delay in coming down from the mountain, they gathered... Uh, one second. They gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make us a god who will be our leader. As for the man Moses, who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what happened to him. Aaron replied, Have your wives and sons and daughters take off the golden earrings that they are wearing and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron, who accepted their offering. And fashioning this gold with a graving tool made a molten calf. Then they cried out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. On seeing this, Aaron built an altar before the calf and proclaimed, Tomorrow is a feast of the Lord. Early the next day, the, Rao, the people offered holocausts and brought peace offerings. Then they sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. With that, the Lord said to Moses, Go down at once to your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, for they have become depraved. They have soon turned aside from the way I pointed out to them, making for themselves a molten calf and worshipping it, sacrificing to it and crying out, This is your God, O Israel, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I see how stiff-necked this people is, continued the Lord to Moses. Let me alone then, that my wrath may blaze up against them to consume them. Then I will make of you a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord, his God, saying, Why, O Lord, should your wrath blaze up against your own people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt, with such great power and with so strong a hand? Why should the Egyptians say, with evil intent he brought them out, that he might kill them in the mountains and exterminate them from the face of the earth. Tains, let your blazing wrath die down. Relent in punishing your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and how you swore to them by your own self, saying, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. And all this land that I promised, I will give your descendants as their perpetual heritage. So the Lord relented in the punishment he had threatened to inflict on his people. Moses then turned and came down the mountain with the two tablets of the commandments in his hands. Tablets that were written on both sides, front and back. Tablets that were made by God, having inscriptions on them that were engraved by God himself. Now when Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said to Moses, that sounds like a battle in the camp. But Moses answered, It does not sound like cries of victory, nor does it sound like cries of defeat. The sounds that I hear are cries of revelry. As he drew near the camp, he saw the calf and the dancing. With, with that, Moses' wrath flared up, so that he threw the tablets down and broke them on the base of the mountain. Taking the calf they had made, he fused it into the fire and then ground it down to powder, which he scattered on the water, and made the Israelites drink. Moses asked Aaron, Why did this people ever go down to you, that you should lead them into such a grave as sin? Aaron replied, Let not my lord be angry. You know well enough how prone the people are to evil. They said to me, Make us a god to be our leader. As for the man Moses brought us out of, who brought us out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has happened to him. So I told them, Let anyone who has gold jewellery take it off. They gave it to me, and I threw it into the fire, and this calf came out. When Moses realised that, to the scornful joy of their foes, Aaron had let the people run wild. He stood at the gate of the camp and cried, Whoever is for the Lord, let him come to me. All the Levites then rallied to him, and he told them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Put your sword on your hip, every one of you. 
Now go up and down the camp from gate to gate and slay your own kinsmen, your friends and neighbors. The Levites carried out the command of Moses, and that day there were about 3,000 of, pe of the people. Then Moses said, Today you are being dedicated to the Lord, for you were against your own sons and kinsmen, to bring a blessing upon yourselves this day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of John. If I testify on my own behalf, my testimony cannot be verified. But there is another who testifies on my behalf, and I know that the testimony he gives on my behalf is true. You sent emissaries to John, and he testified to the truth. I do not accept testimony from a human being, but I say this so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, but for a while you were content to rejoice in his light. But I have testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish, these works that I perform, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent to me. Moreover, the Father who has sent me has testified on my behalf, but you have never heard his voice nor seen his form, and you do not have his word remaining in you, because you do not believe in the one whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think you have entered an eternal life through them. Even they testify on my behalf, but you do not want to come to me to have life. I do not accept human praise. Moreover, I know that you do not have the love of God in you. I came in the name of the Father, but you do not accept me. Yet, if another comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe when you accept praise from another one, and you do not seek praise that comes from the only God. Do not think that I will accuse you before the Father. The one who you know will accuse you is Moses, in whom you have placed your hope. For you, if, you, if you had believed in Moses, you would have believed in me, because he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Both occasions, ladies and gentlemen, were promising of the story of Moses. Moses was the man who was tasked before the Lord to free the people of an enslaved land. For those familiar with the story of Moses, might also be very reminiscent of almost what happened immediately after Moses had freed his people from the Egyptians. The, um, almost immediately, whilst Moses was making himself one with God to uh, the writing of the Ten Commandments, the people of uh, God, uh, the people who uh, followed Moses, immediately turned away because they did not understand the significance or the power that Moses was capable of possessing. Instead, they immediately lost sight when they saw that their leader was almost immediately out of sight. It is very, very interesting that we live in a world, ladies and gentlemen, where almost two and a half thousand years, possibly even more than that, and this sort of sentiment still lingers. What would we all do the instant our leader abandons us or leaves us alone to our own devices? We will... Perhaps we might immediately lose sight and we will pick up on godly things. And at the same time, we disbelieve in people who set out to make themselves known, who are willing to give so much for our kind. What is it about uh, life, ladies and gentlemen, that does not particularly seem very acute to the idea that all of a sudden we have got to start acting like hooligans the second any form of authority has dissipated us? For immediately, as soon as the people were, were, they saw basically the end of Moses when he was up on the mountaintop, they immediately decided to proclaim that a golden calf, a false god, was somehow responsible for them leaving, being freed from the Egyptians. Imagine what would happen, ladies and gentlemen, when 
perhaps when a leader is gone and for all of his works, all of his uh, accountability, everything he has done, and all of a sudden we decide to start saying, no, that person didn't do that, this person did that. That simply would not wash nowadays, ladies and gentlemen, because of things like documentation, archives, history, evidence. All of these things are prevalent. So what exactly justifies the fact that the people are, who are captives of the Egyptians suddenly decided to turn around and say, you know what, Moses uh, didn't save us from the Egyptians. This calf, this, 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 this idol, all of a sudden was responsible. Because, simply put, ladies and gentlemen, human beings are not necessarily the most reliable of creatures on Earth. We've done many remarkable and wonderful things, but that does not mean to say we are always honest. Because why do we not believe uh, Moses uh, was, was sent by God? Why did we not believe, for whatever reason, that Jesus, by that same token, was not sent from God? You could call it straight up down to uh, the fact of, uh, as a part of Judaism, that they do not believe that the second coming has arrived on Earth as of yet. However, it goes a little bit further than that. Think of the situation. Think about the land of Israel. Think about uh, what Jesus had to encounter. Think about all the lives he managed to save, all the people he managed to cure, and yet many people were immediately accusing uh, Jesus of blasphemy, disgracing the name of the Lord, calling himself the King of the Jews, because. To the, to the many minds of the people of Israel, they had absolutely no way of conceivably figuring out possible that this really was the second coming. And many people throughout, and you hear these sort of stories all throughout the Old Testament, whether it's King David, whether it's through, whether it's through Moses, there are lots of people you simply would be, if you were among the crowd, you would not necessarily believe it in yourself because what evidence could you possibly have to say that of all the people who's ever lived, this is the one person we have got to place all of our faith into. But then again, ladies and gentlemen, should it not follow that through the Ten Commandments, and especially in this Sunday where Jesus is going to be delivering his Sermon on the Mount of Olives, that surely, ladies and gentlemen, if there was any reason to believe in something, then we should be able to first believe in things that we know are tangible in front of us. Not by worshipping some fake idols. Idols that are, frankly, one-dimensional and no more real to you and I than perhaps this video projected into your, your cameras, your phones, your television monitors, your laptops, your computer screens right now. At this moment, I may as well seem fake and unreal to all of you. I may as well be considered an idol just like the golden calf. So if it's to be accepted that I'm as bad as uh, important in retrospect as the golden calf, what is important, ladies and gentlemen? Who are important in this world? Who is going to deliver us from sin? Who is going to free us from slavery? Who is going to protect us? Who is going to care for us? Who is going to nurture us? and who is going to love us. It was even enough to remember that Moses was the one who uh, stirred and decided to calm God's uh, blazing wrath, and immediately to uh, go down and to make peace and amends with the people who decided to turn on their saviour. For today, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, the winter time is now coming to an end, so too very surely will be the life of Jesus Christ and consider our treatment of him and consider what we can do to amend for the fact that we decide to worship somebody who was in absolutely no way legitimate for Jesus and Moses and many others in the Bible were legitimate they were the, they were the people who delivered uh, delivered us from evil and to that, ladies and gentlemen, there are many, many people right now living in this world who are also doing the same, who are delivering us all from evil. The question, therefore, we've got to ask ourselves is, if we really want to be delivered, then 
why are we not making men's at this very moment to be delivered from evil? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.